So let's talk about this RO water that I've been using. Right, so if you watched the videos before with me setting up the RO filter and the pills in the video, you'll have seen that I've been uh, recently just moving into using reverse osmosis water for my brewing. And basically I wanted to do a video to say what my thoughts are on it so far. This that I'm pouring now is the beer that I made in that video when I was setting up the RO filter or at the end of that video which is my mosaic um, and Vienna malt smash so it's Pilsner yeast Bohemian Pilsner yeast mangrove jacks um, Vienna malt and just mosaic quite a bit of mosaic so it's, it's just mango mango central on the aroma um, quite clear nice carbonation pretty decent and the other beer that I made with the RO water so far which was the Pilsner now a bit of context first of all my water here not great for um, well not great for brewing generally as a general purpose water it's okay for very dark beers um, I can make a decent porter and stout with the tap water straight out the tap um, although even even then in terms of like pH and stuff it still quite um, pushes it quite a bit out of the window that you'd normally be looking for but for pale ales didn't ever really get on with it um, I moved on to treat my water with CRS very early on when I started doing all grain brewing and I noticed an immediate effect. I did test it as well. I did a side-by-side -side, um, brew when I started using CRS and there was a noticeable difference between them. So in terms of water treatment, I know my water needs treating. It's not good for pale ales. Some people are blessed with good water for brewing with. Um, good friend of mine, Chris, alchemist, um, he, has nice water for brewing, which he never fails to remind me when we talk about this. Uh, so he doesn't need an RO water system. And if you have nice soft water, uh, the point here is if you know if it's fairly low in mineral content, you can add stuff to it and build up your profile and tailor it to the beers that you need. My water is very hard and it's got quite high mineral content in terms of sulfate and chloride and stuff anyway. So. If I want to hit a, a sort of Pilsner style water profile, I can't do it basically with the water that I've got. So, reverse osmosis water after a little bit of research I did was basically, you know, it was the only way that I could go with that. Uh, apart from either buying bottled water, which I can't be fucked with. I'm not going to go out and buy 30 litres of fucking water from the supermarket every time I need to brew. Um, it can work out cheaper if you go and buy it from... Um, like fish shops or aquarium stores or whatever uh, to get the RO water that's been processed by them but I don't even know if I've got one locally I, I'm certainly not aware of any that are in in town nearby um, and again I, to be honest I just can't bollocks with it I, I know the RO system is quite wasteful in terms of water again Chris is worried about us all running out and um, you know World War 3 happening over the water uh, crisis but um, for me at the moment it fucking rains enough here for us to uh, have enough water to be getting on with. So, um, and I'm on a meter, I'm willing to pay the price that I will have to pay to um, use that water up, just watering the plants or whatever. But anyway, I digress. The point is, I need an RO water filter in order to brew beers like this one. The Pilsner that I did, I did a very minimal uh, water treatment on it basically well aside from obviously using the reverse osmosis system stripped all of the minerals out of it with that so i checked it on the tds meter and it was basically zero 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 nothing left and then i followed the john palmer water book recommendation for pilsner 
and just used calcium chloride uh, only a few grams of that can't remember exactly how much but the water profile came out as about 30 ppm of calcium and about 50 or 60 of uh, calcium chloride you can see exactly what it was on the, the Pilsner video I did a quick tasting of it at the end of that uh, grain to glass video but just in terms of like how I feel that the RO water has affected this I did a check Pilsner a while back where I used my tap water treated with CRS so I stripped out all the bicarbonate got it as you know as neutral as possible but it still had a fairly high mineral content uh, especially compared to what people would recommend for lager and taste wise it didn't you know it was it was a nice beer but it didn't quite get to that point where I felt like it was a good um, clean brew this um, I mean even when I was tasting it after one week in the keg it was like you know wow that's a big difference um, I went to Prague recently on a stag do I tried the uh, Pilsner Urkel fresh from the tank because a lot of the uh, bars and stuff out there they basically get the beer shipped straight to the bar they fill up a tank with it, it's fresh it's like you know unpasteurized or whatever very different to the imported sort of version that we get over here and obviously massively different to the standard uh, piss water lager that you'll get in most British pubs and I'm not trying to say that this is as good as some of the beer that I had over there but this is in terms of what I've made at home this is the closest that I've got to the kind of cleanness and clarity of flavour um, that I tasted in the beer over there and Genuinely, when I actually drank the lager over there, it was a little bit of a revelation where I was like, okay, I understand now uh, that the water here has an impact on the beer because um, if you haven't been, honestly, like I know a lot of people aren't into their lagers, you know, nowadays based on what they, what is available at the pubs, but if you go and drink a proper uh, fresh Czech Pilsner in Prague, it's, you know, game changer basically and for me that is getting somewhere close um, to what that sort of, that beer tasted like to me the bitterness is is there as it should be with a pilsner it's quite prominent but it's not you know um, the beer I made with my own tap water prior to this one it was it, it kind of had a bit of a harshness to it the bitterness is there, but it's smooth. Um, there's no harshness. Uh, the malt kind of comes through. There's a nice malty sweetness to it. It's just really good. And I'm, you know, based on that one beer alone, perfectly happy that I paid out the money for the RO system. Then we have the mosaic, so this was a little bit of a different, um, yeah, not not quite sure why I decided to do a mosaic smash Pilsner, Vienna malt Pilsner, whatever, um, as the first beer because, you know, these hops are <laughs> pretty pungent, they are going to overcome a lot of uh, off flavours even if you do have them in a beer. But even so... I've done a few pale ales with mosaic in recently and you know I can still compare to those in terms of how the water character has affected it and it's um, just you know a really nice kind of soft fruity flavour coming off of it there's really no I don't know I guess just previous beers I always felt there was like a little bit of a muddled taste there maybe but uh, certainly when it came to um, the very lighter beers or lagers that I was trying to do that is just you know that lovely Moorish Vienna malt flavour with the mosaic hops kind of dancing across the top there and 
and that's it and it's the um it's the clarity the clarity of the flavor for me with both of these beers which is the difference you can you can pick out the malt and the hops and how it's all interacting and you know i'm not a professional beer taste or anything like that I, you know i don't know how to evaluate it properly and everything but we can tell can't we you know you can tell when it's made a difference to the beer that you make especially when you're making it yourself um and that's um i don't know if basically if i was if i was served that in a pub i would be you know made up and trying to find out how that beer was made and for me you know that's the goal i'm trying to get to the point where the beer for me is getting to the point where I'd be happy to pay good money for it, yeah? I think both of these I'm getting there and for me, using the RO system has been a bit of a, you know, big step up. Um, like I said at the start, if you've got good water to start with, you know, I'm by no means saying that everyone needs an RO water filter, uh, but if you are thinking that water is possibly an issue with your beers um, do it go and get one you know 50 60 quid spend a lot more money on other parts of our brewing equipment and it's one of those things all the books talk about water they say it's crucial um, people spend a lot of money on this sort of stuff I just think that it's uh, it's gonna change my brewing quite dramatically uh, from here on in so you need to get a little bit into it in terms of reading up on the science and stuff and maybe picking up uh, some of the water calculators and stuff but trust me it's worth it do it if you think you need to um, get a if you think you need to get a water filter to clean up your water do it it's well worth the effort and um, yeah if anyone doubts what I'm saying <laughs> chuck me a line I'll send you some beer mail out and you can judge for yourself all right so uh, got two beers to drink now well hey cheers guys and um, yeah take it easy I'm the dude so that's what you call me you know uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or uh, you know El Duderino 